Okay, um, greetings from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, it's great to be here with uh, so many brothers and even sisters from so many different parts of the world. And uh, if there's anything that makes us, people like us who are international people, is seeing what God is doing among the nations in our churches. And each of you are evidence that God is building his church everywhere. And I, I've heard some great stories from, from different leaders, even from Arabic countries, um, even from the Ukraine, a lot about India here. God is doing a great work in India, and that's so encouraging. Um, let me start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for what you are doing to build your church among the nations, Lord. I thank you for each pastor that has made the journey here to Thailand. I pray that this time, Lord, you would use it greatly in his ministry and that the things and the people that he is meeting might go on to impact not just his church, but his personal life as well. We give you all the honor and all the glory for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, today, one of the things we're looking at is contending for the faith. But if we are going to contend for the faith, the local church is the means by which God has chosen to display his glory to all the nations and grow all of us in maturity and in holiness, righteousness. Because it is his glory that the church should display. Not the power of any leader, not the gift of any super gifted man, but no, God is a jealous God. His church is to display his glory and not any of our own. What I wanted to do with you is tell you just a little bit about nine marks. You would wonder, well, nine marks of a healthy church, I'm sure there must be more than nine. Well, Nine Marks was basically started by a former PhD in Cambridge in history of all things. Someone that was never really thinking of going into the ministry. But in his days at Cambridge of studying history, he learned a lot about the history of the church. A friend of his was going to become a pastor and asked him, Mark, can you give me some advice about going into ministry? And Mark said, yeah, uh, um, I'm, I've learned a lot here in Cambridge about this, and I want to go ahead and write it out to you. So he wrote out nine marks that that pastor should definitely see displayed in that church. And that later became a book, and that's what we have here today, actually. Um, after today, we've done these little download cards where each card has a code on the back where you can download it ten times. So on Amazon, a book will cost you 10 bucks, but here this has 10 downloads, so it's about $100 a card in value. So you can take these home and share it with your church members and stop by our table and get a bunch more. But what are these marks? Well, we've learned and heard talked about the, a church is basically, really has to have three basic things. The exposition of God's word, because it's God who is speaking. The second thing is, a church should have a clear understanding of biblical theology. You can take a verse out of the Old Testament, and you can take a verse out of the New Testament, but you need to look at the Bible as a whole. How the Old Testament points towards the coming Jesus and Messiah, and you see that all through Isaiah. And then the New Testament points back at what Jesus did on the cross. So Jesus is the focal point of Scripture. So a clear understanding and use of biblical theology is extremely important for your church to be healthy. A third mark of a healthy church is going to be really a clear understanding and a definition of conversion. Now, the church is not a gathering of just people. In fact, the name church means ecclesia. If you lived in the days of Ephesus, you would have an ecclesia of people interested in planting trees. So a Christian ecclesia was a gathering of those who were part of the way. 
who would meet in homes. And so that word, ecclesia, is church, but a gathering of believers. So the doctrine of conversion and the understanding that what makes us a church isn't that we all like the same color, it's that we serve a same Savior. Another mark of a healthy church would be a clear understanding of the gospel. If your church doesn't have a clear understanding of really the true gospel, it's going to fail at being a church. Another would be a clear understanding of evangelism. I mean, go ye therefore and plant churches, make disciples. Another would be a clear understanding of church membership. Now, I'm going to come back to that one and explain that a little bit more. But as I've traveled the world, that's something that we all see very little of. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Another would be a clear understanding of church discipline. Well, how many of our churches today exercise loving, corrective church discipline? Many don't, unfortunately. Another one of these marks is biblical leadership. Do we have a servant-minded biblical leadership founded on God's Word? Are our churches ruled by one sovereign authority, one sovereign man, or a king, or a dragon, or a popish kind of figure if you're raised in a South American country? Or is there a real biblical leadership being displayed at your church, a servant leadership? Is your church ruled by one man, or are there a plurality of elders? Both those that have jobs and those that might be in the full pay of the church. So, brothers, these are some of the marks. We might add prayer as a mark of healthy church. Missions is a mark, a missions-minded church. So, but there's at least nine marks of a healthy church that your church should and must make very visible and very much explained. But I want you actually today to think with me a little bit. Let's get into the little nitty-gritty of one mark of these, for example. Membership. Over lunch today, I was talking with some brothers from Africa, and I asked them, where is church membership in the Bible? Where is that taught in the Bible? Well, most of our church members today really can't answer that question, and many of them aren't even members. They don't know what they are. But if you look at Matthew 18, so everyone turn to Matthew 18 with me. Verse number 15. So if we're going to see today church membership, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to start at Matthew 18, 15. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. Okay. Where is church membership here? Well, what we see here is a relationship. You have a brother. Uh, that means what? There's a family. You're not going to someone you don't know. You're going to someone you've got locked arms with. He's your brother. And But why are you going to him? You're going to him because there is something going on in his life that goes against the covenant that you have as brothers. And you're concerned for him. You love him. So, so we sort of start seeing here in this passage and unpacking in Jesus' words, you're going to someone that you're calling a brother because you want to restore him and correct what's wrong. But if he does not listen to you, then take one or two others along with you. Well, that's when we look at elders in the church. People who are other shepherds. And, they say, and you say, um, help me. This brother here is not listening. He's insisting to live in this sin. Can, can maybe you and I talk to him? So you're going to go to another elder, another pastor, and bring him along. Hopefully that brother will do what? Repent. And then you guys will be locked arms again. Going on towards maturity and holiness, displaying God's glory to the nations, not embarrassing each other like so often happens. Unfortunately, though, but if he does not listen,
right here, actually, he goes, here, others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses, saying that it's important to have other witnesses and work towards restoration. If he refuses to listen to them, then tell it to who? Another pastor? No. Nope. Tell it to the church. Now, is this church, you would assume they're other brothers and sisters. It's part of the same family. You're telling it to the church. Now, the church has to do something about this. And if he still refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. In Corinthians, we, we hear him even saying the words, return him to Satan. <laughs> you cannot, as a church, go on affirming this person as a brother if he does not repent. And then here's where it gets really fun, guys. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Well, wait a second. I thought this verse was talking about binding and loosing prosperity. That God had everything for you and that he was going to loose everything for you. Oh, well, I hear that in Brazil and in Africa every day. What, what, where, where did this come from? Well, hence the importance of expositional preaching. If we take any verse out of the Bible... You can have people loosing prosperity on you, binding evil spirits in a passage that's talking about loving corrective church discipline and church membership. But here's where you're going to see church membership. Right here, the next verse. Truly I say to you that whatever you, meaning who, who's you there? Someone tell me, who's you? The church. This is all about the church. Whatever you, because it just said, take it to the church. Whatever you, the church, bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. My brothers, look at a bunch of little sticks or lives. When you wrap something around them, what are you doing? You're binding them. They are covenanted together as a live, leaving, breathing body. If you are having, my friend, to lose someone from that, will it hurt? It will hurt. Someone is just being ripped out. They're being loosed, returned to Satan. What are you doing as a church? You are exercising the God-given authority of affirming on earth what is in heaven? You see, the church has the authority given by God to bind on earth what's in heaven and to loose on earth when someone is not obedient and walking according to his statement of faith. Think of this. If our churches are opening wide our front door and saying, everybody, come in and be members. And they're closing the back doors saying, we want to keep you at all costs. That's what most of our churches are doing today. We're accepting everything when really you will never be able to correct or instruct or discipline people that aren't truly regenerate and born again. So if you close the front door and open the back door, those who are members will be meaningful members. You will have meaningful membership in your church. You will have brothers locked arms with one another and affirming what's on heaven on earth. And that is a concept that many churches and many pastors in today's world have never really understood the importance of churches knowing who they are as a gathering of Christians who together work towards maturity and holiness 
of each of our members. So we will never have loving, corrective church discipline without meaningful membership. Our churches must display God's glory more perfectly. So this is just one mark, meaningful membership, in a passage that clearly shows the authority the church has to bind and to loose what is on heaven and earth. If you go back a few chapters, you'll see Jesus giving that same words to Peter. Because what he first gave to Peter, he later in Matthew 18 gives to the church. Very clear, unarguable. Binding and loosing is not prosperity. It's not evil spirits. It's not bad luck. It's simply through baptism we bind. Through baptism the church recognizes those who are in and those who are out. And then through the Lord's Supper, what are we doing? We are continually affirming to one another that we are in, that we are obedient, that we are in the process of sanctification. And that's why we are to consider in, in, in taking the Lord's Supper, are we repentant? Are we holding on to sin? Guys, this all fits together. Baptism inaugurates you. The church recognizes you when they baptize you, that you are a member of that church, accountable one to another. You've just given the right to a brother to speak into your life, like we saw here. Come beside you and say, brother, and if we don't listen, you've also given the right to the church to then walk through the steps to exercise the God-given authority to loose you and say, I can no longer give you the Lord's Supper because I love you. And all I want is repentance and restoration so that we can better display God's glory as a beautiful witness of holiness and righteousness and all the one, of other, the one another's that Christians are called to live and be. So, so growing up in Brazil, I never knew church membership because I was raised and born in a culture where when we discovered Jesus, that was a salvation by grace and not of works. But yet at the same time, when we look at the church, we often look through the lens of culture. And if we're raised in a Catholic country, we expect our pastor to be the, the Pope and to do everything and to, and to give us advice on how we do everything. And so often, if you're in an African country, the pastor is like a tribal king or a ruler. If you're from a Chinese background, it's more of a dragon leader culture. So culture often influences how we really look at the church. So rather than us being an organization, let's look at what the church really is. It's not a building. It's not the Vatican. A church is a gathering of Christians who covenant together to grow in holiness, righteousness, and display whose glory to the nations? The pastor's? No. God's glory to the nations. So as we just looked at today, just one aspect, a church membership, a little bit about church discipline. There's a lot more that you can think about. But with expositional preaching, our churches and our church members we will see these truths as the Bible is taught as a whole, as we seek to be faithful. So success is not measured, or health of a church is not measured in size. Not at all. Health of a church is measured in faithfulness to God's Word. And that's our standard. Are we going to be faithful to what God has taught us? And are our churches 
really showing signs of true health of what the Bible says health is. So these are, the, these are some of the ideas that, that Nine Marks is talking about. Ecclesiology, the doctrine of the church. And through a healthy doctrine of the church, everything else will flow through loving discipline, through biblical leadership, through expositional preaching, through a clear understanding of the gospel, a culture of evangelism, a culture of discipling. Everything flows from the word. So may God be the glory and thank you guys for giving me this opportunity to come and share a little bit with you about the church.